Hey everybody, I'm Joe Deganzik and you're on Smarter Home Life. This is the third and final installment in our little mini-series covering the new HomeKit stuff and the new Home app that were part of Apple's big software releases this week. And this time I'll be focusing on the Apple Watch. Now, whether you use the Apple Watch or another wearable device currently for things like fitness tracking, app notifications, messaging, or something else, you probably turn to it first, right? Because, well, it's already on your wrist and you don't have to take it out of your pocket. This is why wearable devices can be good home automation controllers. Now, with the new Watch OS 3, you can still have Siri do your home automation bidding for you, but what's new is the companion app to the full home app that Apple included in iOS that now shows up on your iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad. What's good about HomeKit on the Apple Watch is that if you're new to either of those or you're just upgrading the watch software or some combination of those things, as long as you have a few HomeKit devices up and running on your iPhone, there is no setup required, no configuration to get HomeKit or the Home app up and running on your Apple Watch. It should just work. Now, since we are talking convenience here, the fastest way to get to the new Home app is from the watch face. And you can do like I've done, which is adding its complication to your own favorite watch face, and then you can just jump right into the app. Now, the Home app is a long scrolling list of your favorite scenes and devices as you have them set up in the full version of the Home app on your iPhone, iPad, etc. And once you give it a couple seconds to go through and refresh it, all of the statuses and so forth, the, uh, the individual items will behave like you would expect them to. Tap once to turn something off, tap again to turn it back on again, force touch or long press or not. Apple, could you just make this behavior the same across all devices? So you can't do that. You have to tap this tiny little icon here then you can get into more settings. And you can change brightness of lights, like swiping down or swiping back up again, and it's, you know, it's pretty responsive. And you can also use the digital crown, like an old-fashioned rotary dimmer, which I think is an awesome way of uh, controlling lights and, uh, and other things in HomeKit. So you can go all the way up. If you're controlling a color-changing light, you can swipe over and play with colors. This is the same color palette you can customize in the full version of the Home app on your iOS device. Is that, am I, am I repeating myself? <laughs> Changing, you know, play around with these things. I'm going to go back to our warm white and change this just back down a little bit more. There we go. Um, on thermostats, this kind of doesn't work uh, so great. If I go in here and I tap in for more settings, it always starts at the bottom. So then you have to go up and to get more, to get lower, you got to go back down again. Kind of doesn't just, it just doesn't work. Apple, can you work on this? So that is literally all there is to say about the new home app for the watch and home kit in general on watch OS 3. Do you have questions about this kind of stuff or home automation or LED lighting or anything else I talk about on this show? Send me an email at questions at smarterhomelife.com and your question may show up on an upcoming Q&A episode. If you like this video, please give, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel and consider becoming a direct supporter over at patreon.com slash smarterhomelife. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Now, how do I adjust this temperature?